I'm Gary Miller. I work for the USDA's Systematic Entomology Laboratory at Beltsville, Maryland. I'm a research entomologist working on the aphidomorpha, which includes aphids in the strict sense, adelgids, and phylloxerids. So we're going to try your slide that says Mises persicae. Let's try a winged specimen in this case. So again, let's go back. I could pick the, the magic wand, but what, let's just try the wing presence again. So obviously, we have wings present in this case. Okay, so we pruned 67 from this particular specimen. Okay, so we're looking at antennal four Renaria. Move up here, and I'm going to bring this into higher magnification. So that's antennal three. And this is antennal four. And I don't see any Renaria on antennal four. But this nicely illustrates the Renaria that you, you, you can encounter, though, on antennal three. OK. So we're going to enter a value of 0. We're going to OK it. Now again, we're to the process terminalis length and base length. So we're going to make a measurement here. One of the things you want to keep in mind is sometimes you get fooled with this is that you want to make sure that that terminal process has CD on the end, because that, that makes it clear that that is the end of the terminal process. I've, I've keyed out specimens already where, lo and behold, the terminal process was broken off and, and it throws off measurements. So you want to make sure that you, you see those, those CD there, two of them. OK. so. I'm going to measure this. Okay, I get 3.5. Now we're going to look at the ratio of the length to the basal width, and this is in the cauda. Okay, so we're going to be measuring. This specimen may give us a slightly off count because it's, that cauda is kind of curved, but the base is going to be from here to here, and the length is going to be from here to the tip. OK, so our next one is going to go to the leg, where we're looking at the ratio of the hind tibial cetal length to the hind tibia diameter. OK, so we're going to measure the hind tibia length, so from Cetal length to the tibia to the diameter. Okay, so, okay. So I'm measuring the diameter. I'm coming up with, um, let's see, five, six, six or seven units to three or four. So it's kind of hard to see that at this mag. So it's having a, a it's calling for a range between 1 and 1.73. OK, as you can see, that popped that up for, um, even though we entered 0.6, it, it rounded up to 1. OK, so now we're down to two taxa left, Mises persicae and Aphis gossypii. And this is a good, a good case in what, this has a feature where you can check this little um, differences, and you can do this for any of the taxa, but if you check the differences, it'll tell you the differences between Mises persicae alates and Aphis gossypii alates. So what it's saying here that the head spicules for Aphis gossypii are absent, but in 
Mises Persicae, they're going to be present dorsally or present ventrally. Okay? So that's what it's telling you the main character is to determine those two species. Okay, but interestingly enough, we've, we've looked at Aphis gossypii prior, and here's where, you know, use in the, in the field, if you've looked at these, remember we, we said that the one had very distinct antennal tubercles, and one did not, so that would be a good character. But let's go ahead and click the next best, and it's calling for Aphis spicules, so in this case, Mises persicae, I'm going to go up here to head region again. You can see those tiny little spicules there on the on the head. Here's a good good picture of them here. So we're looking at them dorsally. You see some dorsally and some ventrally. In this case, let's just pick ventrally. There's the spicules there. Here are the spicules too. Okay. And now we're down to Mises persicae alien. And again, always check yourself. Just click on that little icon. And you have specimens in the field. Go to your all button. And you can sort the structures. In this case, um, we have a lot of the specimens are stained that are up on the web. Aphids, of course, are routinely not stained. Uh, with face contrast, um, um, that's helpful to distinguish them. As, but we don't use differential staining, by and large. So here's the head of the alate. You can compare that to what we're looking at, and they're pretty similar. Siphunculus shown here. A late has that dorsal sclerotization, like our specimen does. And then again, the cauda of the A late, shown here. Okay.